Before there is light, there is only darkness. But where did the darkness come from? Hello everybody. I am Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-435, He Who Made Dark. Let's begin. Item number, SCP-435. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-435-1 is to be kept in a secure warehousing facility that constantly provides SCP-435-1 a minimum of 1000 lux illumination. Illumination must be provided by redundant lamps operating from at least three parallel and independent power supplies providing generator and battery backups. Tests for integrity of the lighting system shall be conducted on a daily basis. In addition, two mobile units capable of transporting SCP-435-1 shall remain on standby in the event of contingency 435-XK-Alpha. No other special protective procedures are required to examine or test SCP-435-1, but research may only be conducted on 435-1 with written O5 approval. At ground level, a secure perimeter is to be kept for 50 kilometers around SCP-435-2. A no-fly zone of 125 kilometers is to be maintained in the airspace surrounding 435-2. At least two Foundation aircrafts and one mobile ground station are to monitor the size and position of SCP-435-2 at all times. Should monitoring detect any growth of SCP-435-2 or any motion of 4352 relative to SCP-4351 for a period in excess of 90 seconds, observation teams are to initiate contingency 435-XK-Alpha. No personnel are to approach within 100 meters of SCP-4352, and Foundation security teams are authorized to take any action to prevent such contact. No research or testing is authorized on SCP-4352 without explicit O5 direction. Description SCP-4351 is a Type 3 iron meteorite weighing approximately 1,000 kilograms, showing significant weathering. Spectroscopic and chemical analysis shows a composition of over 99% iron, which at normal densities can only account for 3% of the measured weight. Age is indeterminate, but analysis of weathering suggests it has been exposed to atmosphere for at least 1,000 years. SCP-4352 is an irregularly shaped object that currently has approximate dimensions of 15 meters by 12 meters by 48 meters. SCP-4352 appears somewhat blurred in the visible spectrum, but computer-enhanced imagery in various spectra has shown a complex structure showing a three-fold symmetry along the longitudinal axis. Extending from the axes are long, tube-like structures that share characteristics both with biological organisms, in particular cephalopods of the order Tuthita, and with mathematical models of higher-order fractals. These structures show undulating movements even when SCP-4352 is stationary. 4352 does not appear to have mass or inertia, and appears to only be visible due to refraction of light passing through it, and because of data expunge, resulting in Cherenkov radiation of varying intensity. Any physical object with mass that comes in contact with SCP-4352 will suffer an instantaneous change in velocity and direction away from 4352 without any loss in energy. This is apparently caused by being reflected through a higher order spatial dimension. If the affected mass is in a solid phase, this reflection will cause a change in topology that can result in either an inversion, turning inside out, a reflection, mirroring of all or part of physical structure, or a data expunge, and high levels of gamma radiation. Because of these characteristics, it is currently impossible to directly affect SCP-4352 with any means currently at the Foundation's disposal. However, it can be moved indirectly by moving SCP-4351. 4352 maintains a fixed position relative to 4351, as long as 4351 is sufficiently illuminated. SCP-4352's current position is kilometers northwest of SCP-4351 on a vector of degrees above the horizon, about meters above sea level. Movements of SCP-4351 have caused SCP-4352 to move a proportional amount maintaining a fixed distance and bearing. 
If SCP-4351 ceases to be sufficiently illuminated for a period of time exceeding 8.3 microseconds, the behavior of SCP-4352 will change. SCP-4352 will enter an active state and begin random erratic movements orbiting the location of SCP-4351. Average distance from 4351 will increase, and the apparent volume of 4352 will also increase. The rate of increase in both distance and size appears to undergo a geometric progression over time, and neither has been observed to decrease. This behavior will cease once SCP-4351 is again sufficiently illuminated, at which point 4352 will cease motion at whatever location it is at that moment, and remain there fixed in relation to SCP-4351. The threshold for this effect currently appears to be between 500 and 650 lux and it appears that this threshold may increase by approximately 9% whenever SCP-4352 enters an active state. Because of 4352's interaction with normal matter, an active state is considered extremely dangerous. Passing through large volumes of air at speeds in excess of 500 meters per second dramatically increases levels of radiation, and if 4352 intersects with water or any landmass, data expunged. Any active state lasting longer than 90 seconds constitutes a potential XK-class end-of-the-world scenario, and requires the initiation of contingency 435-XK-Alpha. Addendum 1. Recovery Notes SCP-435 SCP-435 was recovered in 1952 at While surveying sites for testing a the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers were directed to evacuate the native population from a small island 85 kilometers from the proposed test site. They met heavy resistance from the local population. After evacuating the island by force, they discovered SCP-4351 in a clearing surrounded by several dozen burning torches. At this time, SCP-4352 was not in an observable location and the U.S. authorities had no indication of any anomalies. A survey crew was left behind, and according to subsequent interviews, when half of the torches burned out data expunged. as a result of SCP-4352 moving through data expunged. before illumination restored to SCP-4351. Foundation then took custody of SCP-435, and the US government provided a cover story codenamed explaining that redacted was the result of a redacted having a higher yield than expected. Addendum 2 Interview with one of the village elders evacuated from by U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in February 1955. Interviewed Male, 75 years of age, former resident of Recovery site for SCP-4351 Interviewer, Dr. Richards Forward Interview is part of background research on the history of SCP-435 prior to Foundation custody. Begin log what do you know about SCP-4351? The Skyrock. Yes, the Skyrock. There is a story to it. Tell it to us. Long ago, when the world was only water and sky, there were two brothers, he who made light and he who made dark. Like all brothers, they fought. One time, the light brother insulted the work of the dark brother. The dark one, he does not like this and begins to destroy all the light in the world. He who made the light cannot let this be, so he shoves his brother into a hole that goes outside light and dark, and plugs the hole with a rock. Because he who made dark can only see in the dark, he who made light puts the rock in a sling and throws it around the sun, so it will always stay lit, and the dark one will never see how to find his way out. And that rock is SCP-4351? That is your name for the Skyrock. Yes, it is. How did it end up- Redacted. Long after the brothers fought, the Dark One's rock fell from the sky. It fell so hard that it broke the earth and raised the land and killed the first people who lived only in the sea. On the earth, the sun lit it only half the time. So when darkness came, he who made dark could see to find his way. Even so, he had been lost outside the world for many, many years. So each night, he only came a little closer. 
and each night the rocks shook and bled fire at his approach. The earth did not like this, so she made the second people to watch over the sky rock and keep it lit so that the dark one cannot find his way home. I think you may be the third people. So do you have any measure of how long you are keeping it lit? Since before data expunged. Note. Geological formations in the area suggest that if this is true, then habitation of predates known human populations in the area by nearly 10,000 years. Dr. Richards shows a photo of SCP-4352. Do you know what this is? Y yes Is it he who made dark? No. It is his shadow. End log. Closing statement. The non-material nature of SCP-4352 lends credence to the hypothesis that it is a projected effect from an unknown extra-dimensional entity, somehow bound to SCP-4351. While dumping the rock into SCP and making it another universe's problem is tempting, it seems possible that the actual effect would be to only transport SCP-4351 without transporting the entity it appears to contain, releasing He Who Made Dark into the material universe. Therefore, Contingency 435-XK-Alpha is only a last resort. Thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this narration, then please consider liking the video and maybe subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Also, if there are any other SCPs that you would like to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.